Okay, okay. Thank you. Hello and welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is Zina Islam and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network. Uh, today's session is uh, titled Wise BC Experience Sharing. So as the title says, um, we'd hear from our experienced uh, senior Wise BCs what they're doing, how they're doing, uh, what their challenges are, uh, how they've collaborated with each other. And we have our newer Wise BCs and other academic institutions here also to put forward questions and, um, you know, get advice or, you know, share what they want to learn or from our other wise BCs. So this is an open platform, a free platform for discussion and uh, for idea sharing. And um, uh, this is just the beginning. We'll continue this conversation into many other uh, future sessions, workshops, etc. So I think I'll open the floor. And firstly, I'd like to call upon um, on the floor, Mr. Enrico Testi, who's the Executive Director, ARCO, Director of the UNOS Social Business Center at University of Florence, Italy. Uh, Enrico, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Zina. It's nice uh, being here, uh, even though we are still speaking over uh, Zoom and not in person, which for me is kind of painful uh, after all. Uh, so I hope actually next year we will be able to meet uh, all together. Um, so just uh, briefly, uh, for those that don't know our UNOS Center, I will just go over what we are doing at the moment, uh, also focusing on collaboration with other UNOS Centers. Uh, so our UNOS Center was born in 2011, so it has been the first one in Italy. And uh, as a UNOS Center, we usually work as a company, so we are connected to University of Florence by actually all the funds we use to pay our team come from projects and consulting jobs we do. So um, we are not funded by the university. So this is just to give the, the general uh, business model we have. And um, <clears throat> that's why we are also very active in uh, having to actually do something in terms of activities and projects because uh, uh, we have to sustain uh, the team. Um, so apart from the academic research that we do and we publish the papers uh, like other you know, centers do, uh, we recently published, for example, the paper, me, Professor Bujani, Professor uh, Yunus. We had this very lucky opportunity to publish with Professor Yunus. Uh, we also teach at the university, so we teach social business in some classes, but uh, actually a lot of our activity is beyond the university. Uh, while we still involve the university, but we work a lot abroad. So uh, if COVID didn't catch me at this very moment, I should have been in um, Bethlehem University uh, where they have the, the first human social business center in the region. Um, and we uh, worked with them on a capacity building project for their faculty members. So working with their faculty members on how to do research on social business and social enterprises, on how we can start incubation process of social businesses inside the university. And this is a program which is financed by the Italian corporation. Um, we also have um, a project going on uh, with the uh, Glasgow Caledonian University in Scotland, uh, Barcelona, the UNO Social Business Centre in Barcelona, which gathers six universities in Barcelona and Montpellier in France. Uh, this is an Erasmus Plus project, which Zinat was referring to before. Uh, and in this project, actually, we involve students uh, to work together. So we create teams from different countries that work together to find solutions to problems. Uh, we recently won another project, another project, project with Croatia and Spain. Uh, uh, Spain is always the social business city in Barcelona and the uh, University of Pompeo Fabra. Uh, in this case, we work on digitalization of social economy organizations. Um, we are also working with the UNO Social Business Center, National Central University in Taiwan. Uh, Professor Chen is one of the leading uh, person 
for the Taiwan Social Business City, which is financed by the local government. And actually, they, we are doing now the evaluation. They did a great job in promoting social business and creating also social businesses and social enterprises in Taiwan. Um, so this is also another type of collaboration. So what we actually do, we uh, support other UNO centers to create these uh, city programs, social business city programs, uh, which they will manage uh, locally. It's not us managing the project because it's a, it has to be done locally. But what we do is, for example, evaluate them to be sure that actually they are doing the things and the, the city actually advances towards a social business city. Uh, we have also recently finished the program uh, project in Nepal. In that case, the UNO Center there wasn't involved because uh, it wasn't written by us. It was written by another organization. And we are working now also in Senegal uh, on creating social businesses uh, in the agricultural sector. So going, this is just a general overview of what we are doing at the very moment, this very moment. Uh, in the past, we also coordinated big research projects with different UNO centers. Uh, in that case, also Glasgow Caledonian was uh, involved uh, again. Um, so cutting short, I mean, as you can see, many of these projects have the same UNO centers inside. This, uh, this is just to say that we usually try to work with the people we trust and we already know. So. The biggest difficulty at the beginning with the new UNO centers for us is that we don't know them. We don't know their capacity, we don't know their team. Uh, so it's very hard for us to uh, call, uh, if you see a project opportunity to call uh, out for them since we don't know them. So this is uh, coming back from to, to Zinat asking us what could be you know, the role of the UNO center, I think easing the relations and also uh, since you receive every year the reports from the UNO centers uh, telling us which according to your uh, view are the most active ones of course would help us in screening because now we have 100 UNO centers so knowing them uh, knowing each of them is kind of time consuming for us while you have the more general perspective but on the other side, uh, I mean, we circulated and we can circulate it again. A, a short questionnaire we uh, created with the UNO Center and also with the GCU, where we asked the UNO centers to provide us some data on the project, their capacity. This is useful for creating new projects together. Uh, but we had very few answers uh, to that questionnaire. So, like 10 answers out of 100 uh, UNO centers. So, this is something. If your UNO Center is interested, of course, in collaborating, finding funds uh, together, uh, I think it's there needs to be some effort in you know in building the relations from both sides. Um, strategically, uh, our UNO Center is trying to work more in East Europe, uh, Asia, of course, Africa. Uh, but we already work in Africa. So of course we are happy always to work in Africa, but we, we are missing links to Asia. Uh, so this is something, these areas of the world are of interest, but of course we are open to collaborating with everyone uh, everywhere in the world, as long as it's on social business, of course, and different topics. Um, so my last thing is, if you're interested in collaborating, just uh, drop an email and we will have a, conversation to know each other and discuss about possible point of contacts and interest in research and also consulting because some of the issues is always finding the money to do research you know, for some you know, centers and I think sometimes we have to let's say cross subsidize this activity because it's very few people just pay for research but more and more people pay for consulting so this could be like a new type of business model, let's say, or a business model that can be adopted by other regional centers. Thank you, Zinat, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. I think Enrico, you touched upon uh, very important points, especially about you know you know there being barriers or something that is kind of preventing this um, 
you know, collaborative efforts. Um, we will also discuss from the YSBC end what that can be done. And also you mentioned about the Social Business City program. I think something we haven't recently talked about. I think that's a really interesting one. If uh, other YSBCs want to pursue the Social Business City idea, uh, you know the person, Enrico. <laughs> so your city could be a Social Business City. The requirements are not that crazy. You know, they have to have a certain number of social businesses. And it's always good, you know, having social initiatives social businesses for your city uh, it's a great honor for that city to become a social business city so that is something we can of course further discuss uh, after this event also and i'd be happy to connect and of course i'm sure enrico will be happy to discuss um on it too uh, but uh, i see professor yunus has joined our session today so maybe we'll ask him to share a few words uh professor yunus yes thank you very much uh, i was enjoying the remarks from uh, enrico uh, the very perceptive uh, observations that he has made. Uh, the issue of collaboration is very important for us uh, right now, but how to make that collaboration possible, we have to find ways and means for that. Uh, one method that we do, uh, one uh, platform we have uh, for you and um, Zenith uh, conducts that platform is the, the that we have the lecture series, the dialogue series that we have uh, every month. We have two uh, lectures uh, fixed, uh, the, always the uh, two Mondays uh, of the uh, month. Uh, you can use this platform to have some internal discussion about collaboration. So we, it's a platform. We are talking two or three or four uh, universities together. Uh, kind of thing, developing ideas and so on, can, and having others to uh, um, participate in it and see what their comments are, what they want to do about it, how to proceed about it. So this platform is available uh, every month. We have to do it. We do it twice and we enjoy doing that. And you can jointly have, appear it from two universities on the same topic so that uh, there's a there is no formal commitment to a collaboration, but you enjoy it, uh, doing it together. And they, it may lead to some, something concrete. So this is what I would like to draw attention. This is available, it's going on more than a year now. It's a, it's a continuous process of doing that. Out of that came a collaboration of... Uh, uh, there's a background noise. Can you turn off the... Can you, can you can you mute mute your uh, request the tech team to please oh, mute yes. background noise please okay thank you uh, and another thing uh, that came out is a joint uh, course offering uh, for Asha has done the uh, Asian Institute of Technology they offer the joint course with the UNOS Center and so on. Uh, so this is one concrete example. So collaboration is if you can find another partner to have a joint course. Part of it will be done here, part of it will be done there. Uh, and today, because of the virtual uh, platform availability, it becomes easy. Uh, even you don't, you don't have to really physically send the child, uh, students to move into the other campus. They can be in your campus, in the main campus, but they can take uh, part of the lectures from the other city. That brings the two universities close, two YSBCs close. This is very important uh, to beginning because the students make it happen to do that. So this is another idea that join uh, courses, divide it up, which part of the course will be done by whom and how and so on. Uh, but And I like the comment made by uh, Enrico, classifying all the 100 uh, YSBCs. Yes, it's possible. Uh, to, uh, we can take some criteria and uh, um, independently we can make this uh, classification A, B, C, D, and then you can choose. You don't have to go for everybody to check out. You, you look at the group of um, universities with uh, YSBCs that uh, specializes or have uh, high uh, attention on certain subjects. So you can straightway go to them and what are they doing? So this would be one of the things that we can do. We can, but it needs information from you, from the universities. Uh, our experiences when uh, we circulate some uh, information sheet, uh, it doesn't come back. Uh, we don't get the information that we are looking for. So see if you can make it a simple information sheet so that we can 
collate them and see where we stand in the, which way. So this is another one. Uh, funding. Funding is a major issue. Uh, most of the YSBCs have no funding. Most of the YSBCs don't get any attention from the highest authority of the uh, university. So they are kind of left alone. Uh, that makes it very difficult for them to uh, undertake any, any kind of research. Uh, what I would suggest, there are lucky universities where funding is available, uh, particularly European universities where funding comes from different research sources and so on. Uh, when you submit your research proposal, uh, you could find a friend university or friend YSBC uh, to collaborate within that research and so that you, they become your research partner so that you can give some money through your source uh, to that partner's organization. That way you, you help them grow into uh, uh, serious attention to the research that they can undertake. Otherwise, it's extremely difficult for most of the YSBCs to find this funding and so on. So this is another area that uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to see, examine how to collaborate, how to do, do the collaborations and so on. The last point I want to make, we have the, uh, like we are doing now, uh, Social Business Day, it brings us together, we discuss our issues and so on. And also uh, a Global Social Business Summit, which is coming up, by the way, uh, in November in Turin, in Italy. So this will be a physical one. So you are invited to attend physical uh, global summit and have YSBC meeting there physically or mix of physical and uh, uh, virtual together. That's, that's one. The reason I mentioned that occasionally we can have separate one just for uh, YSBC issues. Uh, if you want to do that, we can uh, provide the platform, we can uh, uh, send out the invitations and so on. We can do the background thing, uh, but you have to come up with uh, something, uh, selected uh, number of universities uh, to discuss some, some issue that you want to get, get yourself engaged in, or you want to draw attention of the other universities and so on. So uh, what I'm saying beyond the social business day, and uh, Global Social Business Summit, we can still have some uh, specific purpose gathering, half a day, full day, few hours, whatever. So this is one, uh, again, uh, Zenith can help organize that kind of thing. So I'm very happy that you could spare some time together on this uh, occasion. And uh, if you want to make any comment or any question, uh, I'll stay for a few minutes, then I'll have to leave again. Uh, I'll stop here and let you uh, raise any question if you want. Good to see you, Sikandar Khan, after a long time. Okay. Uh, uh, Sikandar, say you're on mute. Would you, you can kindly unmute and then talk. You're on mute, Sikandar, sir. Oh. Anyway, uh, it's okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he could not hear us. I couldn't hear. Okay. Anyway. So I'll say uh, good night to you and uh, please continue your discussion. Yeah. Zina. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Yunus, for sharing your words. Uh, everyone's waving at you, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll continue our conversation. Yeah. And uh, now I'll call upon Professor Ashir Ahmed, Associate Professor, Department of Advanced Information Technology at Kyushu University, Japan. Uh, Mr. Ashir Ahmed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Zenith. Can I share my slides? Yes, absolutely. It's nice to see you all. Um, hi, Dusty. How are you? I can see some of our friends as well. Yes, everyone has joined us for Social Business Day. That's wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you. So um, we are in Kyushu University, Japan. And um, we started our journey actually in 2007. Uh, we made an agreement, uh, joint agreement between Grameen Communications and Kyushu University. Uh, we developed uh, Grameen Technology Lab. And then in 2011, we started our social business research center at the time, the term was BC didn't exist. So uh, at the time, we thought that social business research center would be the right term. So this is how it was uh, 
registered in, in our university as social business. And we are very fortunate that we had a very big um, um, sponsor for the SBRC. So they sponsored for five years long research and uh, eventually it's like we can use the fund for 10 years. So since 2011, we are still using the fund. Um, so with the fund and with the objective, we had five items to do, research, education, promotion, incubation, and collaboration. So uh, what we have been doing in the uh, research part, uh, we did uh, social business technology development research, that was the one thing. And our one of the focus items was in the healthcare. Um, and uh, I will give you some uh, activities that we have done um, through uh, 2011 to 2020. It's a little bit old. <clears throat> so on the education part, we taught students from undergrad to um, PhD um, students and students got their PhD on social business, social business technology development. And you can see there are some thesis on PhD um, social business um, activities as well. And um, on the conference side, we wanted to promote our technology. We have, uh, we um, um, participated all the social business academia conferences since the beginning of 2020. So we uh, wrote papers and also um, uh, discussed our findings during the academic conference. Um, <clears throat> I think my, um, sharing is a uh, little finding some difficulties here. Anyway, I will um, keep talking. But inside uh, Japan, we were very much uh, fortunate that uh, Toyota funded us. Uh, we had other uh, research fund uh, from uh, Japan as well. Um, many companies uh, initially uh, funded us for the uh, research and development. Um, I think my slide is not going showing some difficulties, uh, it's kind of came up. And uh, we published uh, books in Japanese. Uh, there were a few publications, I'm sorry. It's, um, yeah, so I think I was here. So two uh, books in, in Japanese um, and uh, the books are used in many universities in Japan as well, uh, who are working on uh, social business and also development works. So uh, that about the uh, book. And also we started our uh, one program called Three Zero Leadership Challenge Program. We started it last year <clears throat> with collaborating with the Three Zero uh, headquarter in, uh, in Dhaka. So what we did, we followed all the, um, uh, uh, all the um, specification from the three zero club. So we engage students, uh, 70 students from different countries and this is the engagement we taught during. And we also have social tech summit um, since 2007 and we had it last year as well. So it's a tech summit, but last year it was uh, online. It was easier for us to do and more than 8,000 people in total joined our program from worldwide. It is not in the one session, but in the three days, it's the cumulative number. So uh, some sessions were in Japanese as well. Uh, we uh, talked about how to, you know, the concept of social business to implementation of social business, the funding to social business. And we were very lucky that last year, uh, Japanese dormant fund was, uh, it's a fund from the government. They gave 50% of the fund to for developing social business in Japan. So we funded two organizations in Japan as well. And we discussed the opportunity in Japan, how to uh, promote uh, social business in, in Japan as well. So um, I think I will stop here. Um, so in the collaboration part, actually, um, you know, in the promotion part also every year we do YY contest from 2011. So um, we started incubation, uh, like teaching and also encouraging social business entrepreneurs who were students at the time. But today at the Japan Forum, we found this 10 companies, actually 50 companies were created. They were registered by uh, the uh, social business seven principles written in their, um, in their document as well. 
and uh, 10 companies uh, actually uh, today, they um, share their experience. So it seems like all the new ideas, very small companies starting from uh, scratch, but they're already um, uh, doing their business and some are successful and some are have challenging as well. So I'll stop here, Zinat. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for sharing experience. I think two things that you mentioned, one was about the social business PhD um, uh, you mentioned. I think uh, some of our other YSBCs, the ones in India, you know, Korea College worked on a social business course, uh, like, uh, you know, a short course. So maybe that is something we can, you know, work together on. Uh, the newer YSBCs may need guidance on how to develop the course or some of the contents. Other one you mentioned about the social business um companies, entrepreneurs, I think the I think we need some mentors from our new, uh, for the students, you know, the students, many people are not familiar with social business. I know sometimes, you know, we can have language barriers, et cetera, but with the translator, I think maybe we can have like a session where some of these business owners or business executives can share what inspired them, plus how to create you know, a social business plan or how to start a social business. Sometimes we are all clueless what to do. Students, you know, uh, in the competitions, they've come up with their social business plans, but to hear it from like a person who's actually done it in a real world is completely different. So I think we would like to reach out to you on the, that front. So you'll be probably getting an email from me soon. And that's something we can do. Yeah. And I guess, um, Professor Yunus mentioned about a lecture series. Maybe we can have one of those entrepreneurs or some of those entrepreneurs come um, during a lecture series and have some of the students from our YSBCs. I think some things that we miss is we're always working with the academics and we don't see the students. I think now we need to bring those students because, um, you know, um, you know, then they're on the on you know the front of the scene and uh, they get to face the challenges. So I think that is something uh, we can work on, and I'm sure the other YSBCs will have something to say on this. Um, so thank you very much for sharing on that. And now I would like to call upon um, Ms. Maria Isabel, who's the YSBC Director at Universidad de Ceci in Colombia. Uh, Maria. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to see so many people here. Uh, I'm saying hello from sunny, very sunny Cali. A uh, very big city in Colombia, in the southwestern region of Colombia. Um, Maria Irurita, director of the Junus Center for Social Innovation here in Colombia. And I'm going to share very briefly what we have been up to. We are a very small team. Cali, for a start, is a city with more or less two and a half million people. So it's not a small city, but it's not the biggest city in Latin America. Uh, and Cali has a very long trajectory of business development and is a very enterprising region. And um, for some time now, we have had our Junus Center inside Isesi University, one of the best universities here in this region and in Colombia. We are a very small team of nowadays five people, these five people that you see in this picture. And we have three main functions, which I think should be a mandate as well for every YSBC around the world. One has to do with everything related to education, formation, and capacity building in terms of promoting these topics. We have a master's degree in social innovation management where we have introduced the topic of social business. It is a course, especially on social business that we have in this master's degree. But it's not only a master's degree in social innovation management where we teach this. There is also nowadays inside Isesi University a master's degree in sustainability. It is a master that has been created between four faculties as sustainability should be considered and thought about. So we are also teaching sustainable business models within that master's program and 
everything gravitates around the topic of social business. And we also have nowadays a master's degree in business development, in enterprise development. It's called Creación de Empresa, Enterprise Creation. And in there, I am also teaching social business. So basically, everything that seems like a good opportunity to speak about social business, to present this model to new audiences, to try and convey this very powerful message that Professor Junus has given us of we can only move towards the future rethinking our system and rethinking the way our businesses work. And we can only walk towards a sustainable and inclusive society through this perfect model of social business. It is not a perfect bullet for every problem that we have in the world, but it is a very good way of humanizing this economic system that we have that has us at the brink of collapse. We are there on the edge of collapse. So we need to start inviting universities, traditional faculties, traditional careers, and young people in terms of creating a three zero world. And this can only be possible through this model of social business. So that is our first function, education and formation, not just in the form of a master's degree, also creating any kind of class or course that you ask us to create, we will be developing that. On the second hand, we also develop research projects. We are open all the time to investigate, to pursue further research in these topics. There is a lack of knowledge in Colombia and in Latin America in general about how many social businesses do we have? How many of those social businesses are led by women? How many employment employees do they have? What is the impact that they are creating? So everything that can help us advance this field and understand better what social businesses are, what they are creating and what they need, we will be pursuing research in those topics as well. Uh, social business, as you know, probably by now, is path dependent. It is context dependent. So it is different, the research needs that we have here than the research needs that Professor Testi might have in Florence. But there is a space as well for producing collaborative projects and joint projects that can help us compare and advance one field in one region. And on a third place, we also have what I call action transformation. So three branches, basically, education, research, and action transformation. And in terms of action and transformation, let me move it this here. We have some projects. I want to talk today about two projects that we have been leading in the last year. One is called Parche Innova. Parche Innova is a competition for youth-led social businesses. Basically, it's an invitation for young people to propose social businesses to solve some of the problems in their communities. We had an amazing response by young people in 2021 and in 2022 telling us, I want to do something for my community. I want to work, I want to focus on this problem. How can I go about it? So we are here supporting young people in the process of developing and strengthening their own social business ideas. And we also created a program called Junus in the Communities. 2021 was a very difficult year, not just for Cali, but for Colombia. We had social unrest. We had a strike, it started as a worker strike and it paralyzed the whole country. The country suddenly woke up to 
a vast majority of young people with no opportunities. And suddenly we realize, oh, we have here young people not studying, not working, and willing to protest and willing to block, if necessary, this system because they have no opportunities and they have nothing to lose. So this provided us this very crisis and this very critical moment last year around this time pushed us to go out on the streets and to deliver workshops on social business and social entrepreneurship in places where we had not gone before. In 2021, we visited more than 45 community organizations. We went out of the university corridors and classrooms to try and bring this message and this knowledge to different community grassroots organizations. Through Parche Innova, as I said, we visited different schools and we had more than 60 proposals from young people. And through Junus in the communities, we managed to go outside and to visit rural communities, grassroots organizations, inviting them to consider social business as a way to sustain their own initiatives. This system, this world in which we are, isn't particularly friendly, as you probably know, but with the promise of social business and with the model of social business, we can truly walk towards a sustainable future, towards a society with zero poverty, zero hunger, with zero unemployment and zero carbon emissions. And we need, at the moment is a hundred YSBCs around the world. We need every single university to be embracing these topics and to be teaching these topics. So if I can be of any help to any of you in terms of creating an educational program, in terms of perhaps proposing a collaborative research or in terms of developing capacity building support packages for organizations, I'm here in Cali, Colombia, in Latin America, but willing to work with partners all over the world social innovation and social business have to be created in collaboration. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you for your great offer. I hope our wise BCs do take up this um, offer of help and collaboration and uh, good things work out. And, um, and you mentioned something about like the lack of information, how many social businesses, how many workers, what's the impact. I think this is something our wise BCs in different region can work. Uh, you know, we can also uh, from the center help gather that information and, you know, store it up uh, like social business pedia can be location where such information is there but of course we all need to work collaboratively to make that happen so i think that is something um we sh that's an important point that you discuss and we of course would like to work on it uh, now I think uh, we have one or two presenters from our senior list missing, but um, I think we can start discussing with our newer YSBCs um, and other academic institutions. But um, and I would like to start that by welcoming uh, Professor M. Sikandar Khan, who's the Vice Chancellor at East Delta University in Bangladesh. Uh, so Professor Sikandar Khan, please share your views. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have gained so much from the last three speakers compared to their areas. In Bangladesh, I don't think the teaching and research of on social business issues have not proceeded as far. Uh, the main reason is uh, we, for the last few years, we became dissociated with each other. And uh, the interests of the people around has actually uh, diverted to many other areas. Young scholars are always uh, in search of such venture in which they can get a ready degree. And that ready degree, not in, uh, in the sense that it is a research degree. So 
uh, there are not many places in the country where they can go for research on issues like social bank, uh, social business, uh, progress of social business, ways social business can help the nation grow. Where these are issues which has got to be searched in very, uh, very, very extensively. The fund shortage is one reason why we don't have researchers uh, interested in this particular field. The second is whatever literature is produced, it is not yet available to all the places where this should actually be ready for work by uh, the students, by the researchers. And as a result, a sort of, uh, a sort of inertia has grown. That inertia has to be broken. And now that the pandemic is over and we are having the uh, UNUS day or social business day, at this part of the year, we can start with greater enthusiasm now. For the time being, I think whatever we have done uh, is just uh, putting in some uh, very, uh, very catchy issues of social business into our syllabus at different levels. Instead of going for a good uh, organized, syllabus on issues of social business, we have actually uh, scattered uh, works in different parts and they are not being actually uh, uh, taken together to form a concrete course at any stage of undergrad or postgrad. I am telling all this about in, uh, in terms of our own university where actually uh, this is a new university, but still we are going ahead in many other areas quite easily and quite naturally. Social business seems to be an idea which gives so much of interest to our students, to the newcomers, to the new teachers also, but not much available, uh, much, they don't find much to do in that field right now with all say, the uh, materials available and funding uh, also. So in a sense, we are doing it in a very, uh, uh, in a very easy way, in, a, uh, in, in doses of uh, rather sporadic uh, educational materials at different points. We have a social business club within the university and that club is very good club. It actually takes uh, one to uh, organize things quite a long time. We have teachers behind that club and they people are uh, for some uh, time now, not doing as we expected them to do. This is because things are not available in the area in a manner they will be uh, ready to accept. So that is a very uh, big stumbling block. But we find that we can still go on uh, introducing uh, chapters on, in different courses rather than a full course of, or a program degree giving program in the area of social business. That is still too far for us. And we intend to actually go for it. And in that area, I'm actually in this uh, seminar, searching about how others have proceeded so far, and we have not been able to proceed uh, that long and that intensively. I'm sure these papers, when they will be available, will actually contain the most important materials for us to find a way uh, of actually uh, bringing in 
this as an academic program. And uh, so long we have, uh, we have actually not, uh, not engaged in uh, very seriously in this. Uh, this is uh, because we don't have funds to contact people outside uh, for different specialized courses, excepting uh, the ones which we have with our uh, university with whom we have collaboration uh, agreements. They are, most of them are Western universities. And so far, uh, the, more, the ones we have actually been able to uh, contact, they don't actually offer such courses in, uh, in depth. And we are searching for areas where actually we shall find a collaborator with us uh, to uh, lead us or to guide us or to help us. And we intend to actually organize a program in this respect. And we have uh, our uh, internal arrangements so arranged so as to be able to take advantage of anything that comes on our way. I hope the universities uh, which are already ahead and which uh, have produced people with this background, I'm sure we shall be able to follow their examples. And the small stumbles, there will not actually be any hurdle finally. And I'm sure we shall be able to continue. Uh, actually, I am here more to learn from others than to say that we have not done much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your words. Um, indeed, I think there are a lot of social business resources, but perhaps they're scattered. I think um, we can aim to bring those items together and uh, put them together so it's easy for all YSBCs to access. About the social business course you mentioned, actually tomorrow we have a plenary session on building social business curriculum. So we'll have a few speakers who will talk about that. So I welcome you to join that um, session and perhaps more discussion is gonna go on. But um, there are some universities who have a current curriculum plus the AIT Thailand, they have a master's program in social business. I know sometimes because these programs are offered by the universities, perhaps there may be, you know, situations that they cannot share materials or, you know, have an exact copy of the course. But I'm sure all of our YSBC experts are often, you know, very happy to share as much as they can. So we'll definitely get in touch with you and your team on ways we can, uh, you know, develop a social business curriculum. Uh, I, I see um, Mr. Bishwajit Ghost has raised his hand. Did you have anything to say? Uh, yes, sir. I just had a question which I would like to ask in due course once you are done. Um, he's done. You can ask. Okay. Uh, thanks, Zinat. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Enrico, Dr. Maria, Professor Ashir. I think, you know, you guys are doing an amazing job. I mean, for anything good, we need role models and, you know, we can already see that in action. So delighted to hear from uh, all three of you. I had one question to Dr. Enrico. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, you talked about the incubation center. So uh, ultimately, this whole journey about social business and, you know, building uh, future, uh, uh, you know, social business entrepreneurs would depend on uh, what I see as experiential learning. So it would be interesting to know from you how you encourage students to participate, uh, how do you incubate, how do you foster that environment? Yes, uh, so we uh, have our own incubation program in the social business city in Pistoia, uh, which is uh, partly connected as an experience to the university, but actually targets a lot high school students and then the general population and of course, university students. So um, what we do in high schools, uh, we do a social business plan competition where young people get to know about the concept. Of course, we are very practical when we say that we don't expect 
uh, young people of 17, 18 to start a company. Okay, so we know that you are just uh, putting seeds in their minds, and maybe in the future we will uh, just see the fruits. Um, but then we give the opportunity to other people, so from the city, uh, also from the university, even though uh, I have to say university students um, usually, uh, as far as my experience is concerned, they don't start a social business, social enterprise just right away after they, they finish in university. You know? they, they want to do other experiences usually. And when they're like 30, 32, then they, they start uh, thinking about it. So for example, one um, social business we created in Pistoia, which comes from a young uh, person, he finished university, he started working in the digital uh, field. And then he took part, I think after three, four years from university, okay? So he took part to one workshop we did, uh, open to the general public. And he understood that what he was already doing could become a social business. So now he is the first inclusive digital agency and he involves uh, young people with disabilities uh, in digital marketing and working on websites and so on. So, and now he is employing two of these disadvantaged people. So what, what I'm saying is that the incubation program is okay if it's set inside the university, but maybe shouldn't be only targeted to the students, but maybe also to faculty members, you know, or to researchers. Uh, some, I think about bigger universities that have like uh, engineering and so on, you know, the new companies can come out from uh, researchers, not only from students or for a mix, by a mix. Um, but I think I strongly believe that universities should be also open to society. Uh, and to provide opportunities also to society. Otherwise, we just keep everything closed in our ivory tower, you know, and we don't actually uh, create well-being. Um, I know that it's kind of difficult to start things at the university. And there's a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of things. Uh, but if you open up also to uh, more the community, I think it's also easier to find funds sometimes you know uh, big companies or foundations will fund initiatives that will benefit also the community and not just the students so i mean this is i don't have a very big experience i mean uh, i have just this small experience in pistoia and then we uh, are now working with bethlehem university which they are doing a big very good job in promoting entrepreneurship to students so they created i think 60 uh, small enterprises up to the moment. We have to see which ones are actually social businesses because sometimes the concepts, you know, uh, might get mixed. Uh, and they target all the students. So actually, I will go there at the end of July and I hope I, I can discuss with them better in detail what is their model and maybe share also their experience. I know that Professor Fadi Katan actually has been or is one of the speakers at Zinat uh, so maybe you can also ask him directly a bit about the business. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I see another hand raised from Dr. Lal Nirma, but can we take uh, have another speaker and then we'll go to your question? Is that okay? All right. All okay. right. No uh, we have quite a lot of speakers today. So uh, next, I would like to call upon um, Dr. Pradeep Sharma, who's the Registrar of University of Engineering and Management, University of Jaipur, India. Dr. Pradeep uh, Good evening. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are loud and clear. Thank you, Zunat. And uh, once, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to congratulate all the members over here. The senior members uh, who are, uh, I hope, doing very well in their YSBCs. We are new. Uh, we have just joined, and I came to know that uh, UEM Jaipur, uh, the university which I am representing, is the 100th uh, YSBC. And uh, is the, you can say, the responsible part we are taking care of. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, myself, Dr. Pradeep Sharma, Registrar of University of Engineering and Management, Jaipur. Uh, Jaipur, I think all of you know that it's a travel destination whenever you visit India. 
and uh, i'll be welcoming you if you any time visit in near future our university offers engineering management and the physiotherapy courses in undergraduate postgraduate and phd level so few research scholars are also there we are doing uh, as uh, dr sandeepo said that uh, incubation centers are required so we have incubation center in our university as per the requirement of the engineering students as well as management students many of the students have uh, started their own companies and uh, they are doing well all of our students are getting good placements as we know that and our target is as a higher education institution we should provide employability and employable skills to our students so that they can take care of their families so that they can take care of their society and what are that kind of uh, you can say na, social engineering and we can say the support to the families or support to the society can be there if we can make them employable and that is our motto good education good jobs so we are providing every kind of support to our students is uh, more or less a student centric university and uh, i invite all of you over here that you can go along uh, go through our website for different uh, programs what we are offering and uh, i invite uh, to collaborate with us for our research part though we are right now doing research in engineering management and science streams but definitely uh, we will be looking into how we can develop a social business curriculum in our university but since many years we are doing social uh, we are taking social initiatives in our rural areas we are in, under unnat bharat abhiyan under the government of india program we are one of the center and regularly we are conducting uh, various activities in different villages and uh, different sarpanches with uh, uh, all the uh, uh, persons over there so definitely it will be a learning session for uh, for us as a university because we are first time uh, collaborating with ysbc and definitely i will be looking forward for the support from all of you thank you thank you very much Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sharma's university is a new entrant into our YSBC family, so very very warm welcome. Um, these are these are some of the members of our YSBC family. You'll be getting to know them, like working with them in the future, hopefully. And um, we look forward to seeing you uh, from now on in all our events. So welcome again to our YSBC network. Um, now I would like to call upon um, uh, I know Professor Guo from the Ningbo China Institute of Supply Chain. Um, he was he probably has a flight or flying. So um, I saw his name. I'm not sure if you're still here. Um, but if you're here, would you like to speak now? I had seen his name, but I don't see it now. Perhaps he got disconnected, uh, but he wished to join us. Uh, but I believe he has a flight, and if he is, uh, you know, if he comes back, we'll have him again. Uh, but now, Professor Lalinwa had a question, or if you want to take the floor, uh, Professor is the a professor and head of Department of Extension Education and Rural Development, Mizoram University, India. Professor, yes, thank you, thank you, Zinat. And good evening to all of you. Uh, yeah, uh, as Zina just pointed out, uh, we had uh, signed an MOU with uh, uh, UNO Center in the year of, I mean, like 2000. That is two years back. But uh, frankly speaking, sincerely speaking, we, ha we have not uh, done much because we are still yet to get the support from the university administration, but now I'm determined to go ahead with whatever way we can. So that is the challenge we have. We are having. Uh, I have a few questions uh, to all the, I mean, like the three speakers, the three, like the first question I have is uh, to Dr. Enrico. Uh, you were saying that like, you know, uh, most of the fundings are from uh, projects and research, right? You are not getting uh, funding from universities. So like uh, those funding sources are, is it like from national funding agencies or 
international funding agencies? That is my number one question. And my number two question is like, you were also, it, it was, uh, it's quite interesting to learn about your collaborative research programs. You mentioned uh, several countries like, uh, Bas um, like Spain, Barcelona, Croatia, Taiwan, those things. Like, you know, I'm just interested to know the nature of collaboration, like how the funding is done. Like you are funding, I mean, like your, your center is funding the research and doing the research there with them, or they are doing their own funding and you are helping them in the research, that part. Then I don't know if I can continue with the other questions. Maybe I may not have time in the thing, like to others. How do we go, Zinat? I have one, one oh. question to Maria and Professor Ashir. Okay, uh, I think um, you can ask the questions and uh, two questions now, and then we'll get back if we have more time. All right, all right then. Yeah. So, so I stop now. Or I, I continue with the question. Only two I questions. Think, one, one, yes, each. Uh, two, Professor yeah, Ashir. I think uh, Enrico. In fact, I have to leave. So if you can ask the okay. question to me, then. Uh, All right. It's very late for him. Very All right. Then uh, it's lucky that you are still here, Professor Ashir. Uh, yeah. You were saying like, you know, your trust activities on research, mostly research. So you have pointed out in the slides that uh, your research, there is a report on social business technology. You know, I'm just interested in knowing uh, on what are the component of those social business technology, you know, maybe some examples, one or two, something like that. Okay, as Professor Yunus mentions um, in his book, he says um, three zero to achieve and how to achieve three zeros, he mentioned about four tools. Um, one tool is um, social business. Second tool is technology, youth and good governance. So uh, since we are from the uh, Faculty of Computer Engineering, so we were thinking how we can help, like solving some social issues by developing uh, some disruptive technology who can directly help solving a social issue. So one uh, such issue is the healthcare issue. So I was showing a kit that we have a lot of people, 50% of the world population do not have access to uh, quality healthcare. So this is because uh, the facilities are not really um, fairly distributed. So we can see some rural areas uh, where there is no doctor, there is no clinic. We can see um, some areas uh, which is very difficult to reach. So how can we reach this unreached community by developing a technology? So technology is there. So we just dismantle a clinic, uh, a normal clinic. If you see what components are there in the clinic, you will find four type of things. One is uh, like the um, sensor set, a doctor, a nurse, and then uh, some equipment, for an example. So we can put everything in a box because of the technology. So the sensors are becoming smaller, efficient, and also cheaper. So we can put it in a suitcase. So if you can train one healthcare lady in a rural area, in a local area, which is available, you can um, give it to them and they can be trained. And if we can have social business methodology, then they can run it as a social business. So only the missing part is the doctor. We cannot really send the doctor to the rural areas. So that doctor can be connected by the internet. And the good news is, you know, almost like 80%, uh, almost 100%, 80% of the population in the whole world have mobile phones, access to mobile phones. So that technology is there somewhere, you know, the, somewhere the uh, quality is good or bad, but almost everybody is connected. So we develop those kind of technologies. And uh, so that's the basic or holistic um, approach of uh, explaining the thing, but there are very tiny little um, challenges, technical challenges, social challenges, and approval sort of challenges are there, affordability issue, uh, business issue. So we um, pick up one by one, and we have uh, this technology developed in uh, seven different countries. We tried it in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, uh, recently Nepal, in um, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia as well. So we are getting a lot of social issues 
technical issues coming from the field. So we are solving one by one. Our students are working on that. They're publishing their papers. So it's a win-in relationship, as you know, that the university students love to do their work as well to publish papers. So this is the nutshell, one area. Did I answer to your question? I did he get disconnect? No, there he is. Yeah, I think um, uh, Dr. Lalinwa, did you have any more questions for him? You're He's unmuted. Muted. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Dr. Lalinwa? I think he's on mute. Uh, can you do it from the host side to unmute? Yes, him? I'm. Uh, can the tech team assist for this? Oh, there no, it's okay. Oh, no. It won't. Uh, no, we can't. Mute it again. We cannot hear you, Dr. Lalanima. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Okay, okay. Now we can hear you. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you are. All right. Uh, just one one short question to Dr. I mean, and Maria. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to learn that uh, you're offering master's degree in social innovation, and uh, you said like uh, as a component of social innovation, you included uh, some social business courses, Lo like you know. I don't know if, will it be possible to get sample of the syllabus or, you know, uh, maybe um, I just believe you may be having one or two courses of social business. So like, it, uh, is it possible to share with us? Because now I'm very much interested in like introducing some social business courses. And Zenat also has uh, given me some, uh, some links wherein I can find some, uh, uh, material. So, is it possible to get? Uh, I think Maria, um, perhaps she's unable to hear. Or Maria, are you mute? Unmute. Uh, but yes, I, I'm I, listening. I, okay, I'm okay. listening. Yes, I'm listening, and I thought that is a good question for me as well. So we have created a knowledge portal. It's a web place where you can find more information and where we can, we are publishing at the moment, every piece of research that is conducted by our students on issues around social innovation. But more importantly, there, there are also signposted another organizations and resources that can help you navigate the field of social innovation. As you probably know, this is a field that has advanced primarily through practice. We have practitioners, we have organizations leading the field, and they have also started producing um, their own intellectual body of knowledge. So I can send through CNAT always, I, I can send different links and different sources of information where you can start getting a sense of how social business also fits within the wider concept of social innovation and how you can start promoting both within your YSBC. Okay, thank you. That, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, for the sake of time, we are going to move on. Um, I see Dr. Maithai has joined us. Uh, thank uh, you. She's traveling. Gina, yes. one thing there, the question to Dr. Erin Enrico yes. has not answered yet. So uh, we, no. can we come back to that? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, so we can have everyone have a chance to speak. We'll come back to Enrico's question. Is that okay, Enrico? Okay, great. So Dr. Maithai, who's a very senior member of our YSBC family. My Thai, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Sorry I uh, come late because I am traveling and so it's not always easy to find a spot where I can have the internet. 
So anyway, I am very happy to join your session. May I share the screen? Yes, of course, please do. Okay, thank you. So I was asked to share the experience of uh, uh, our program, social business creation that I've been uh, working on since 2016. And every year we have extremely good growth. And um, so I'd like to share with you what we've been doing. And I really hope that you will join us. Uh, it is a global platform to train um, uh, entrepreneurs, students to create social businesses and also to uh, train students how to work in a startup environment. And uh, people join in our program as an SBC community, social business creation or SBC. And through this community, uh, companies have been uh, created. So all of the students appreciate our program uh, in that it is a life changing experience. And all of them say that the mindset has changed. And we have also been conducting uh, research to measure our impact. And I'm very happy to share with you that our independent researchers really validate that the students have a different and positive mindset after joining our program. So now, as you know, that we are in a global knowledge economy with um, uh, the rise of uh, robots, our world is connected, uh, globalization and spread of knowledge and uh, rapid development of technologies and intensive use of human knowledge. That's just, everybody knows that, right? But then because of this, we live in the VUCA context. Uh, and in this context, the United Nations has set up the 17 uh, goals for a sustainable uh, world. And uh, in the VUCA context, it means we are in a... Um, uh, situation of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And so universities really play an important role here. So that's why we are here, right? And so now what uh, is different from our program is that we follow a VUCA approach. VUCA approach means we teach students to have a good vision, good understanding, and good level of creativity and high level of agility. So we live in a context of, uh, in a VUCA context and we have to apply a VUCA approach. That's what we do in social business creation. And it's uh, reflected in everything that we do. And our program is organized uh, at HEC Montreal in, uh, with a lot of support from UNUS Center and particularly Professor Mohamed Yunus. And we are now an impactful global platform for the promotion of social entrepreneurship education and practice. So you know that entrepreneurship is the most applied field of all disciplines. And so that's why our training, uh, we focus on both theory and practice, and we really emphasize on actionable theory. And you'll see later that we also have conferences and research and uh, besides our training. So SBCs now is a uh, intersection of three networks. So the network of learners, as you see, that's how we were born with. So, um, but then we work with uh, researchers, scholars to get more uh, up-to-date uh, knowledge to train our students. And we also train um, the uh, teachers how to better coach their students because we apply a very different uh, pedagogical methodology. We use gamification and uh, experiential learning. Uh, our classes are flip side classes where we start with the, uh, we take students at the center. We start with the idea by the student and then we coach, we, we follow the student learning and adapt our teaching to the speed uh, of the students. And so because of that, we need to do a lot of research uh, on social businesses as well as on um, pedagogical methodologies. And we also work with the practitioner uh, community. These companies will uh, open doors for internship for those students. They also propose the challenges that they are facing so that they work in collaboration with the uh, students when they enter our program. 
And so our program here is a collaboration of research, uh, is a combination of research training and co-creation. So uh, every year uh, we follow uh, four stages. So students, we will guide students on developing a social uh, mission idea. And then we will have students who study entrepreneurship and management to follow with the projects all through uh, the year as in a uh, format of a competition. So a lot of companies were created at the beginning and then we um, uh, help them develop that. And naturally as a competition, you'll see the number of uh, companies, uh, the projects reduce. However, we do not eliminate participants. So those, uh, the members of projects that are eliminated will reapply for jobs in the projects that uh, stay. And so their student will get, get a very safe environment to learn how to launch projects, how to apply for jobs, how to uh, recruit employees. So then in the first part of the competition, it's in March and April, we focus on training students on social innovation. Uh, we help them to understand the problem and ideate solutions. In May and June, we focus on teaching them how to prototype the business models and the social solutions. And then in the next two months, we uh, focus on teaching them how to execute the idea and how to manage growth. And then the, and the, the three um, stages here, they happen online. So we collaborate with partners who give offline training and the students have follow our online course in the format of a MOOC, the uh, mass online course um, module. And then we have the... Um, uh, uh, global training sessions. Uh, later, I will show you some of the sample. So all of our trainings are recorded so for students to follow after. So the intersection with global office is online for the first three uh, rounds. And we work in collaboration with our local partners. The, uh, these partners organize offline sessions for the students to follow them during these periods. And therefore we have to train the teachers so that's why we offer the training of the trainer program. So uh, we collaborate with our partners to better train students. And then the uh, final round happened in Montreal. And now we are also moving to hybrid because some of the students cannot um, afford the travel. And, um, uh, but we are work, uh, the, uh, the, the format seems to work pretty well so far. We do it for 2000 and 2001. Now, it, it was because of, COVID, so we had to change our model, but now it turns out that it works pretty well. But then we require a lot of collaboration from our local partner to make it happen. And then we do research. And then we do research and we organize conference. Uh, so for people to present their work, and then we find a way to uh, publish our work as well in serious journal um, and book series. So we are still work in progress. Uh, so now you look at our results. So in 2016, we got 25 projects with only 70 participants. And this year in 2020, uh, we got 146 projects. And we got, uh, so far, we got um, 470 participants. And so the number is still uh, going up because uh, projects are still recruiting new members. And people can join at different phases of the uh, competition depending on the kind of uh, competence they want to learn, whether they want to learn social innovation or business uh, innovation or executions and growth or multiplying the impact. And uh, now we have been working with 154 schools from 26 countries, and we have eight representatives abroad that, uh, well, in Bangladesh, we have Daffodil University. And in um, Brazil, we have UNICEOS. In Germany, we have the THI. Uh, in Argentina, we have Austria. In Mexico, we have uh, Anahuac and Veracruz. And in Bolivia, we have the uh, De Valle. And in Vietnam, we have a foreign trade university. So these partners act on our behalf to uh, work with other universities in their uh, country. And just to give you the performance of this year, yeah. So with the uh, uh, the projects, so we attracted sixty-seven thousand people 
407, uh, 60, more than 67,000 people to register with our platform to vote for project that to follow the project. And so this is the result of the first round of social innovation. We are in the middle of round two of business innovation. So uh, you'll be able to see the number of people who vote um, uh, in about a month or so. So I'll be happy to uh, um, share with you the updated result as it uh, happens. So uh, you can go to our website uh, to see about the projects. And now I'd like to give some of the examples of the projects that came out of our program. For example, Portera, uh, just last year, it got uh, recently it got the um, uh, over 300 euro investment. And then it has just built a new factory of 2 million euro. And uh, the students started with us. Uh, uh, but now, uh, after a few years of operation, uh, the student has received a lot of awards. And another example is Tu Bodega. So um, last year it got 3 million. Uh, and then earlier this year, it got almost another million. So almost 4 million so far of investment. Uh, so started with groups of students and now they become real uh, good impactful projects. Or Nuetro uh, Flow, it's uh, also got a lot of uh, awards after us. It's become one of the most influential uh, network in Colombia for helping uh, women. So these are just few examples. I would have days to uh, tell you the story of, of our participants. So I would like to um, uh, show you a, a short video. Do you have time for that, Jeanette? Uh, Professor Maite, maybe uh, you can mail us the video and I'll send, share okay. it in the group. We have quite a lot of uh, speakers left. <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, maybe you can put it in the chat box, and then uh, people can take the link from there. And um, um, this social business creation, as uh, Professor Maithai shared, I encourage everyone to look at it. You know, it's a competition open for all, so you can uh, you can share it with the students and encourage them to apply for it. I know, as she mentioned, there are like different universities that act as hubs in different countries for it. So maybe your university can be one of them. Uh, so yeah. she'll, I request Professor Mai to put the details in the chat box and others can please take it from there. Um, uh, now can I would we like... get the, uh, the PPT also? It would be very useful sure. to study. Sure. Um, Professor Mai, if you as kindly actually share the PowerPoint with me so um, I can share it in our group. We'll, okay. I'll do that. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's now... an open, uh, open invitation. I, we are still looking for partners. So I really hope you join us, become our local partners. Thank awesome, you. wonderful. Um, now I welcome Dr. Viva Taku, who's the Joint Director, Training and Placement at Sharda University, India. Dr. Viva Taku, the floor is yours. Good evening, all. Thank you very much, uh, Zinatri. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. Sure, please do. Yeah. So uh, a small introduction of our university. I'm Dr. Vibha Thakur, and I'm having dual designation, Associate Professor in Computer Science and Joint Director Training and Placement Department. So Sharda University is located in uh, Greater Noida, and we have six, uh, 14 schools under this university. And uh, these 14 schools cater all the disciplines, all the program like medicines, engineering, allied health sciences, education, like all the courses. And uh, we have uh, established our uh, unit social business center in, very recently in only, uh, you know, uh, January, 2022. So whether my slides are uh, visible? Yes, they're visible, yes. Okay. So uh, we are focusing on uh, four things like, uh, we have conducted one week uh, on-site training program for uh, self-help group uh, women, artisans, and we are uh, mentoring for skill enhancement and sustenance of uh, women self-help groups. We have collaborated uh, with one of the YSBC, that is Career Group of Institutions, and we are going to relaunch online certificate course on social business uh, with Career College. So uh, you can see, uh, this is uh, the one week on-site training program we have uh, conducted. 
uh, under UNICE Social Business Center. And this was the skill development for artisans. And uh, this was uh, conducted from 10th January to 16th January. And the result was just awesome. These artisans have started earning approx 5,000 rupees per month, uh, you know. So they are not earning anything. Now they have started earning something. And uh, in the same way, we have conducted one uh, program for mentoring for skill enhancement and sustains for women health group on 22nd of March. We have conducted one guest lecture in collaboration with the UNIS uh, Center Thailand. And uh, the topic was defining our post pandemic future social business as a new paradigm for economic development. And here you can see some you know, media coverages also. So uh, very impressed with the work uh, Dr. Enrico and uh, the um, Professor Maithai and Professor Ashir Ahmed from Japan they are doing. We have collaborated, recently we have uh, inked the MOU uh, with Career College and uh, in their association, we are relaunching the certificate program. So we are also looking forward to launch some UG, PG certificate, diploma and PhD programs for social business. And, uh, you know, uh, UGC recently, uh, I think uh, you all are aware of this, that UGC, according to UGC guidelines, we are like Indian universities may uh, provide, may offer joint programs, dual degree programs and twinning programs. These all three have separate definitions. And for this, we are open to collaborate with all the YSBCs. Because, you know, uh, as the Professor Yunus also has mentioned, that collaboration is the, you know, key to success. Because through collaboration, you are making someone else's strength, you know, you're making it your strength. So I think uh, we, uh, this is it, what I want to say. So thank you very much. Would like to stop share here. Yeah, I understand that like uh, other speakers also want to uh, present and speak. So, uh, uh, Zinaji, please, uh, you know, connect with uh, connect us with Dr. Enrico uh, and uh, other senior members. Yes, absolutely. I think we are already connected in the invitation mail, so please feel free to carry on the conversation. But of course, um, on a separate mail after Social Business Day, we can connect and make uh, great things happen. Uh, now, uh, if Hello, Dr. Uh, Rajiv Ganguly, Professor and Dean, University of Engineering and Management, Kolkata. Is Professor Rajiv Kanguli here? Okay, if he's not, then we'll move ahead. Uh, do we have um, Dr. Shuparna Ghosh, Assistant Professor, Career College, India? Dr. Shuparna, your four is yours. Thank you, Zinat. Am I audible, Zinat? Yes, you are audible. Yes, correct. <clears throat> Very good, after, uh, very good evening to all of you. Let me introduce myself first. I am Dr. Suparna Ghosh, Dean Life Science and Head of the Department Chemistry in Career College, Bhopal. Social business is a benefit maximizing venture for the welfare of society and for the environment. In the pursuit of helping others, Following the enlightened path of this Nobel laureate, Professor Mohammad Yunus, career group of institution is on progression with YSBC and take pride in announcing the journey of social business via MOU and short-term certificate course. The aim of Career College YSBC is to create jobs and provide support to socially vulnerable groups. The journey is full of experiences and challenges. Under the guidance and blessings of Yunus Saha, we successfully launched a short-term certificate course where total nine modules were prepared by our faculty members and uploaded on teachable.com. In addition to this, four three zero clubs have also been established to serve the community. All the three zero club members are learning the real motive of this club 
and all are in full enthusiasm to do something good for this society via these three zero clubs. I am proud to share that our key person, Ms. Megha Khare, is really doing wonder under the guidance of Dr. Jaspinder Mehta, who is real mentor of all these three zero club members. Three international conferences have been successfully organized in collaboration with YSBC and three zero club Bangladesh. A social idea thon has also been organized, which was quite enriching. It takes pride to inform that with the help and mentoring sessions with Zinat, Mustafez, and Purvita, our students have submitted their social design and fiction for international competition. Here, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Viswajit Ghosh sir also for holding our hands strongly in this path. Initially, the journey was not so easy for us. We took time to understood the novel concept of social business, but gradually it becomes the integral part of our life. I am really fortunate to be associated with this pious and noble cause to help undeserved by putting my best as much as I can. Most importantly, I owe special gratitude to Nobel laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus for the inspiration towards this social business. The entire team of Career YSBC would like to learn from the existing YSBC centers and would like to help wholeheartedly the new UNOS centers because I believe that we all are now family and together we can change the world. Thank you, good night. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ghosh. Um, it's wonderful to see the activities that the Career College is doing and uh, with Mr. Bishwajit Ghosh uh, um, getting all the other YSBCs in India together to make it happen. So we're really happy to see such activities. Um, is Ms. Bishwajit Ghosh here? Uh, perhaps uh, he has dropped, but if Mr. Bishwajit Ghosh is back, we'll have him. Is Dr. Samapika here? Samapika Das Biswas, um, Assistant Professor, Institute of Technology and Management, Kolkata. Are you here? Okay. Uh, if not, then we'll move to Dr. Lal Nilwa. Are you there? We can finally take your question and uh, have your part of the. Conversation. Uh, yes, Zida, yes. actually, um, uh, tonight I'm here to learn most from the the, the senior ones. So uh, I have maybe asked... Maybe Enrico's uh, question, yes. Yes, so maybe... Do question. I need to repeat uh, Dr. Enrico or you noted my questions? Uh, I noted them. All right, then. Yeah, it will be nice to hear from you, sir. Okay, Zina, do I answer now? Yes, please feel free. Okay. So the, the first question was about uh, funding sources. So actually, as a strategy, we decided to have different funding sources. So on one side, we have the consulting job we do for companies. Uh, in Italy, we have many social enterprises, and now there is a law which uh, say that they have to show their social impact and to prepare a social report. So what we are doing, we are selling services to evaluate their social impact and on how to write the social reporting. So this is, let's say, on the market consulting activity. So then another sources of funding are the projects we do with foundations. So for example, the Social Business City in Pistoia is, has been funded up to now by two local foundations. Uh, then we have the funding for projects which come from the European Commission. So this is a European funding and which is also interesting because sometimes some of these European funds also are open to organizations which are, which are not from Europe. So this is something that uh, could open opportunities also for other youth centers. We then take part to tenders. So for example, we uh, did a consulting for a UNDP, United Nations Development Program, and now we are trying to apply to another tender uh, in East Europe, uh, also from UNDP. Also in this case, sometimes 
since it's in other countries, if we have good partners in this country where the tender is issued, we could see to, to apply together. Um, so this is the funding also comes from projects we do with, with NGOs, mainly Italian NGOs, which are financed by the Italian Cooperation Agency. Uh, we could apply also with NGOs coming from other countries, but we don't have so much uh, connections. So, but in theory, we could apply to funds coming from German Development Agency or others. So the, the, the thing is that as a UNO Center, we try to have different sources of funding because if you rely only on one, actually, you know, you are too, um, you are not so resilient, you know, if something goes wrong in that source of funding, then you have to fire all the thing, which we, of course we want to avoid. And coming to your uh, question about collaborative research programs. So uh, we usually apply together with other UNO centers for funding. So it's not us providing the funding. Um, so we apply together and if we get the funding, of course, we both benefit from it. Uh, there are also other models, uh, for example, with the social business city, what we do, we help the social, the UNO center in that country, for example, in Spain, it happened in Spain, uh, it happened in Taiwan, in uh, trying to fundraise uh, locally or from international donors, depending on the situation, to fund the activities of the social business city even though in that case, 90% of the work is done by the local UNO you know, center, not by us, because we don't have the contacts, but let's say we, we provide the framework and we think that there is an external organization checking that the, all the program is appropriate. So in some cases this happens, uh, I mean, this helps. Uh, so for example, this helped the first development of the social businesses and the UNO you know, center in Barcelona which they got funding from local foundations, city council and so on. And then they did different activities and now they're still going on. And they're partners with us with projects and Taiwan the same, you know, they, they, they were, the city government decided to fund the program. So uh, in that case, we just provide some support at the beginning and then we do the evaluation, but all the work but also the benefits, I would say, are for the local you know, centers. You know? So uh, the collaborative research we do, we do it only inside projects which are financed by organizations like European Commission or United Nations or others. We don't have the energy to do research which is not paid because we are an entrepreneurial model in our you know, centers. So we don't have free money. I mean, sometimes we do some small free research, but usually it's kind of writing a paper. It's not a major research, which usually is financed. I hope I answered all your question. Yes, thank you very much for that. Oh, wonderful. Great, great. Um, Enrico got, Dr. Enrico got quite a lot of questions, and I'm sure many will follow after the session. But uh, I don't think we have anyone left um, to speak. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, I think uh, this has been a great session, a very fruitful session where we have addressed um, a lot of important issues on, you know, how we can work together and some of the lackings we have, the need for collaboration, the role of UNICENTER, what we can do from UNICENTER to make it happen. Um, uh, um, some of our speakers, unfortunately, perhaps connection issues, internet issues, we weren't able to join. My colleague, Yaniz, uh, who's from University of Monterey in Mexico, she has got from COVID, she's really sick, so she's unfortunately unable to join. So she sent her apologies to everyone. But thank you very, very much again for sharing your stories. This is really important. And I'm very, very positive that from this conversation, from this session today, well, some collaboration will happen. I'm very positive about that. And again, uh, you know, as Professor Yuno said, that social, the Global Social Business Summit and the Social Business Academia Conference are in November. So hopefully we can come back again on that that um, 
during that time and share what we have achieved within that. So from June or July to November, what we have done and um, how we can progress from there. So thank you very, very much. I thank all our speakers and discussants and all our audience today for attending today's session. Um, we appreciate your time, effort, and being a part of this network. So thank you very much. We'll again see you. Um, uh, we can take a photo if people want to turn your camera on. Uh, we can take a photo. If one or two people, it's fine. If you don't want to, no pressure. OK, let's take a picture. There you go. I got a capture. So thank you very, very much again. And um, you know, I welcome you to continue watching the events of Social Business Day. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.